Alan Thurkettle has two pressing issues to deal with. Delays with the European Space Agency's Columbus Laboratory being built in Germany, and closer to home, a critical test deployment of the ATV solar array panel in the Netherlands. Jeff, you'll have to, uh, to take the lead this morning on the, uh, the solar array drive uh, test itself because I've got a meeting with, uh, with Danielle now that uh, I have to attend at 10.30, so I'm not quite sure. But proceed without, uh, without me if necessary. I'll join you as soon as I can. The test being performed on the billion-dollar ATV is to make certain that the solar array panels deploy properly in space. There have been some serious concerns about the bracket hinge system. Experts from Germany and France have flown in to work with the Dutch team. The solar array panels will power the ATV on its journey to supply the space station. No, that was necessary, the last bit. So did you hear they're going to delay the, uh, the next shuttle flight until March? March next year? Yeah. That's, that's a bit of a problem for us now because with Columbus and the uh, the nodes that have got to go up, we're getting later and later, and uh, all the scientists are getting a little bit upset that they're not getting their, their work done properly the way they wanted to. I really hope that NASA can get the, the thing sorted out and get it up and flying again because it's it's very very necessary. Still, the longer it's on the ground, the more the ATV is necessary. And this is what scientists throughout the world are waiting for. The launch of sophisticated research laboratories like the Japanese Experiment Module, or GEM. It is Japan's single most advanced laboratory ever destined for space. A key design feature of the GEM is an exposed deck that weighs over 4,000 kilos. Here, it will be possible to create experiments in the vacuum of space using a 10-meter-long robotic arm controlled by the astronauts. It was named Kibo, the Japanese word for hope. The hope here is that after 10 years of development and sitting at NASA for two years, it will finally take its place in space. And if all goes well, then this too is where the Columbus module will call home. In Germany, discussions continue over the American and European size discrepancies that are causing delays to Columbus's completion. We are able to uh, crimp the American size uh, wires with our European size uh, pins. Correct. Although they all have the same AWG size. From the specification, they are the uh -huh. same, but the tolerance are so big that we uh, have had to develop a method to, uh, to fix it into the pin. Mm -hmm. And we, we do it by inserting small, thin wires to fill the crimp up, and then we, and then we crimp. And so, that, tomorrow in our telecon, we have a proper story for ESA. Yes, I think so. I think Explain so. our delay. And excellent so. <laughs> and now we can also commit to, to the test that we invented here. Yes. But on the other side, we cannot take any compromise on the quality, so uh, we have to fix it really. And uh, I told you the other day that we make a voltage drop test over such a crimp, and if the voltage drop is not okay or is in the specification, uh, we cannot accept that. Uh, sure. Tomorrow we tell ESA problem, that's problem solved. we solved it. Mm -hmm. We are sorry we have the delay. Yeah. Due to, <laughs> due to what? <laughs> what shall we tell them? Yeah, and, uh, so we, we, we get material which is out of specification yeah, several yeah, times, yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, that, and that is a problem. Uh, why can't they stick yeah. to the standards, huh? Yeah, why can't they stick to the standards? We have to, to teach the, the American how to do this one day. <laughs> Back in America, at the Kennedy Space Center, work is nearly finished on the insertion of the bearing into the truss. Yeah, All right, if both your uh, shackles are loose, please uh, de shackle. Lily, did you say the weight was 4,000? 4,010. 4,010. And we had, of course, you know, we put the flight wing on. The other main thing that we had going on today was the uh, lift of the S5 cargo element to put that split bearing on. We have uh, a bunch of vendors coming in next week to start to work on the on P5 and S5, and we still had that forward work on S5 to get that split bearing in. Lift should be going on 
now. Yeah. So yeah. maybe we can check it out on the. Let's on take the a look. Let's see. <clears throat> I think it's 47. Shuttle stuff, VAB, administrator. Yeah. There we there are. There it is. Today, uh, we're just lifting it up uh, to get that split bearing on so when they install the the device inside the trunnion that uh, if it expands, we'll be able to get the bearing off. Hey, wrap it up. That does it. Uh, real successful job today. So, uh, and then we have to move very slowly. As the International Space Station continues its 250 million kilometer a year journey in space, Moving the ATV just a few meters on Earth can prove difficult. Keep the cradle in position. The ATV supply vehicle is being pushed into position for important testing. Stop! To get to this point, almost 150 international space experts analyzed over 50,000 pages of technical documentation before the design was approved. Okay, we have finished the check. Okay, thank you. Meanwhile, in Germany, Columbus project manager Gunther Brandt updates Alan Thurkettle. Good afternoon, Alan. Well, good afternoon, uh, Gunther. Well, I just uh, want to uh, give you feedback on the, on the problems uh, that we had in our harness uh, production. I think we mentioned that uh, there was this uh, stupid discrepancy between this uh, American uh, wire gorge and the uh, European pin. We did all this testing and all these goodies. Uh, so now the process is okay and uh, we proceed in crimping the harness. Uh, and yesterday we checked uh, the uh, situation and I think we can now commit to our, our test day, the 14th. Yes, I'm, I'm not that concerned with, uh, with what may or may not have caused this, uh, this slippage, Gunther. What, uh, what I'm concerned with is the slippage and uh, uh, the whole schedule that, uh, that we're trying to, uh, to work on is to make sure that we finish all the power-up activities on the, uh, the flight hardware by the end of this year. And what I absolutely need from you is confirmation that uh, you've got workarounds that will enable that still to, uh, to occur. In Italy, another setback. Progress on the Node 3 is halted when tape securing a heater protection pad comes loose. Something as simple as this on Earth could lead to a catastrophe in orbit. If this become loose, could be dangerous for the people inside. Eh? Because, you know, these heaters are uh, critical for the operation of the node, especially when uh, is, uh, the node is not powered in orbit. Uh, during the transfer from uh, the shuttle to the berth into the station, this is to prevent freezing and condensation. Next, they need to install a vital valve to stabilize the pressure between the shuttle and node 3. This valve gives the possibility to, to reach the same pressure before to open the door internally and externally. It will have also the change of the hair itself because we have an inlet 